Okay, going into day three of trim. I've got all the red and white stripes on it on the, the top and the rudder and sub rudder. And uh, it, it took me all day to get the, get the tape on the nose uh, correctly. So now today what I'm doing is I'm back masking. You don't want to paint any of the dark blue where the red goes. So I'm going over and taping up all the red areas. And, uh, and I'll be spraying the, uh, the blue and then when the blue dries I'll be back masking the red. So there's a lot of a lot of taping going on. So far it's taken two and a half rolls of fine line tape to do this model. That's $25 just in fine line tape. Not including the three rolls of masking tape. So we're at about $30 worth of tape so far. Tomorrow I'll be far enough along to make it to the sign shop to get the uh, I, to get the uh, stencils made exactly what I want. We will be doing gold leaf on this and that should be in this week. I posted the link where to get the variegated gold leaf. Um, if not, you can contact me and I'll uh, give you the link where I buy the, the gold leaf. I buy faux gold leaf. It's not really gold. It's, you can't tell the difference between the uh, the fake and the uh, real gold leaf and I can't see spending two hundred dollars for gold leaf. Gold leaf only runs you about I think it's ten dollars a, a book. And it gives that nice appearance. Take your time when back masking. You don't want any mistakes because if you leave one area untaped, it's a disaster. <laughs> you kind of got to plan your paint job out how you're going to do it. Not sure what I'm going to do about the inside of the cowl where it, where it wraps around inside because we want it to look finished but I don't want to carry the pattern onto the inside of the cowl either so I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I think I will probably just take some tape here and reach in through and close the exhaust hole up. Yep, that worked good. So we won't have any overspray going inside the cow. I'm tape, gonna tape up the holes here. Yeah, I'm afraid that I'm kind of way off the mark of where I wanted to be. Keep going over the weights. It looks like it's gonna end up 52 ounces. I wanted it in the uh, in the 40s, but uh, 
There's just no way. give you a few minutes of me taping to give you an idea how much work really goes into this. And this is not all that complex. There are some paint jobs that are super complex. Like when I did the uh, the silver leading edge on my Thunderbolt, that had to be painted black. Then I backmasked the uh, black stripes around it. And then I primed it and sanded it, painted it silver. Then on t I mean, that was a lot of work just to get those black lines around around those silver panels. So here hmm, here we have that red we need to tape off. We'll try this. We'll try masking the hole from the outside. See a spot I missed. So I, I would assume this will take me another half an hour, 45 minutes to mask the whole airplane. And uh, you can best bet that it takes, it'll take less than five minutes to paint the thing. And all the preparation is into the uh, masking. So now we get the paper. Remember. This is uh, just the first masking. I have to remask everything after I paint it. You can buy that paper for eleven dollars a roll at the uh, Sherman Williams Body Shop Supply. It's. Uh, Probably the cheapest thing to buy.
take the tape, run it on your shirt. Take some of the stickiness off of it, otherwise you'll pull paint up. At least you will with the good body shop tape. Looking at the internet again today at the airplanes that I painted, the real airplanes I painted in the 70s. Kind of miss that. Now with the airbrush you can kind of control it so you don't have paint going everywhere. But you still want to get all the, everything masked up that you can. When you fold paper over like this, make sure you tape it off. Otherwise, you'll have overspray wicked down in the paper. I don't know why, but it just, take my word for it, it does. So you can seal that fold over off. Okay, we're getting there. Just doing this to show you how much work really goes into a, a paint job. Because <laughs> I know it's very boring to watch somebody paint. But I did say on the page that I would show it all. So to give you a breakdown, it took all day yesterday to get this lined out and, and uh, laid out the way that I wanted. Put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off.
pretty close. Pretty close to painting. Now that tinfoil method that Wendy shows, that looks to be a pretty good method, but I don't think I could afford all that tinfoil. <laughs> okay, so now we got it taped off well enough to paint. And it's probably total, including including the uh, masking of the trim, probably eight hours. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Didn't take long to, to finish it up, but it sure took long to lay it out. So now we got that uh, done. I take some Windex, squirt it on a paper towel. I'm going to wipe any fingerprints off that we had on it. In the Navy, we used to use isopropyl alcohol, and I suppose you could, you know, use a rubbing alcohol for that as well, but... So now you want to go give it the once-over. Make sure you don't have any uh, areas that are untaped. paper on the end of the wing here. That's just just a precaution. I, I really don't think it's necessary, but I don't want to take any chances. This is day 35. We don't want to screw 35 days worth of labor up for something stupid. Like not taking the extra time to put the uh, paper on it. And obviously the overspray is not going to spray out to the tips. It's just not going to happen. Okay, let's spray the blue. One more quick look, make sure we got all the areas. <clears throat> ah, I see a spot. I'm cutting down the through the masking tape to the fine line. And there's enough fine line there so you're not if you have light pressure, you're not cutting into the paint. And it wouldn't much matter anyway because you're gonna seal it all with clear. my 
scalpel. to be a surgeon. There we go. I had some of the masking tape that had ridden up over the fine line and that would leave a terrible looking line. So we'll check the rest. Looks good. Looks good. So I'm going to turn it over, I'll do the bottom first, I'll turn it back over, I'll do the top, and that'll be it. Then take all the, the masking tape off the red, unpaper it, then I got to wait and retape the blue. So here we go. There's a break in it so I can do half and half. I hope you can all see that. And I, I can't see the monitor, so I'm not sure whether it's showing what I'm doing. Oh, I love like navy blue. I guess that's being for being in the navy. But the color I painted most is gray. I'm a painter of gray. I would not exaggerate, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that I bet I've applied over 500 gallons of gray paint. Maybe more. That includes ship painting, barracks painting, airplane painting. I bet it's way more than 500 gallons. Figure every day we put a, you know, a couple of gallons of paint on for four years. Two six, yeah, it'd be a, maybe a thousand gallon. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but it was fun. So, it's tacked up now, we're going to turn it over, it's all covered, tacked up, we're going to turn it over, we'll do the top, being careful not to set it down on the paint.
can wait a few minutes. We're not even talking minutes because it's it's uh, on so thin that it probably surface dries within a minute or two. Um, then I come back and, and give her a wet coat. And that's it on the trim. The uh, trim colors on this have added less than an ounce, probably half to three quarter ounces. The trim will add maybe an ounce or two, or the or clear, I mean, depending on how much clear I want to put on. I still can't believe that I heard that you could put a whole quart of clear on and only gain an ounce. I just, I, I, it just boggles my mind. It doesn't seem right. But uh, I think this time we'll uh, probably measure how much clear weighs because I'm kind of interested in that. One thing that I uh, would like to interject, what I'm going to do on this model because because it's a classic airplane and uh, and it's gonna you know it's it's a glow engine ten percent I'm gonna use uh, urethane on the nose up around the cowl I'll probably do the the canopy and the leading edge right here may go out to the to the end of the tips as well and the wheel pants in urethane but <clears throat> Painting urethane with an airbrush, it'll take less than two ounces of fluid material. So I, I don't feel it'll add much weight, but it sure adds longevity to nitro. Reading on the forum, I see people ask about luster coat and about all types of other. There is no paint that comes out of a can, none, that's 100% fuel proof. You know, you may, they may say it's fuel proof, but I ain't buying it. <laughs> Nitromethane is some bad stuff. And the more you go up in nitro, the less fuel proof it becomes. Now, there's a difference between fuel proof and fuel resistant. The old Aerogloss dope was fuel resistant. Matter of fact, this dope I'm using here now, the real Randolph dope, it has a Brodak dope, it has zero fuel resistance as far as I'm concerned. When it melted the, the paint off my Monado cow, not impressed. Well, that's basically it. Uh, I'm going to wait 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to shut the camera off. We'll come back, unmask all this business. I'll have to remask it. That means I have to mask all the blue off. Uh, and we'll paint the red. So, we'll see you in an hour. Hi, okay, it's been about an hour. And uh, I've given this some thought. And instead of unmasking everything, I'm just going to unmask where the red goes. I'm going to leave all this paper on. That way I don't have to redo all that. We'll unmask where the red goes and paint the nose here. And then take everything off and then paint the two stripes on the back separately. I'm all about doing the least amount of work as I can possibly do.
since we're done with the blue for today, I'm going to do the wheel pants off the airplane. So. Now normally, I just take the paper all off, but because we're leaving it taped, I have to be careful because I'll just run another piece of masking tape over that and we can paint the red. Seems like a lot of work, but uh, going to save a lot of time. Maybe I ought to move the camera so you can look over my shoulder. Of course, there's really not much to see. I'm just cutting away the paper and the tape from the canopy so I can retape it. Okay, that looks pretty good. save some time. Now let's do the nose. bit overspray get by the tape there but fortunately it gets painted up hopefully I didn't get any overspray leaked by somewhere else Okay. And we do the bottom. And 
has just one little spot here. Now we have to tape off the inside of the nose, the, the uh, cooling openings, the spinner openings, and the cylinder area one more time because we're changing colors, it has to be redone. You don't have to do this. You can let it overspray to the inside of the cowl if you like, but it does look more professional when you got everything finished, including the inside of the cowl. And it doesn't take that much longer to do it. Okay, that looks good. Again, this is not absolutely necessary. And any spots, you can come around and touch it up with a brush on the inside of that lip before you clear it, you won't be able to tell. So we got that. Now, now we have to get ready to tape or paint the red. A little bit of overspray there. Make sure you take the stickiness off the tape because it will pull the paint up. Now we're taping over the blue, right back over it. And the reason why I do the blue or the darker the two colors first, if you happen to get any overspray red onto the blue, it won't show. But if you spray blue onto the red, it'll show big time. And here again, 
because this is uh, you got an airbrush and you control the uh, the spray. We don't have a big, massive amount of taping that we need to do to get this ready to go. stripes on the back behind the canopy will be done after I untape it because they're red. Quick and easy striping system. Now the top here is a little more difficult, but not too bad. Very boring. Sorry about that. But everybody wanted to see it all, so that's what we got. Take the razor blade, we're cutting right on top of the fine line tape light pressure just enough to cut the tape and not through the fine line and that takes practice to uh, figure out how much how much uh, force you really need to use but you'll get it I'm going to show a secret or it's not a secret but a trick when I get to a spot on how to do corners without cutting the tape or without tearing the tape I should say you're gonna cut it but you're gonna do it with the razor blade Pretty good.
make sure it's all covered. We're about ready to paint. So it went pretty quick. You can see that uh, it's not a huge deal. I think the biggest thing in painting these multi-color paint jobs is planning ahead. If I'd have done it the other way around, we'd have had to back mask the whole thing and remask and So now, all that's left is to paint this nose red, and uh, I'm going to have to clean up the gun to, to switch colors, so I'm going to cut the camera, it'll take me a half an hour to get the gun clean, and we'll shoot this real quick, so I'll be back. Okay, took a few minutes to clean the gun and get it ready to go. And now we're going to finish off the red. So we turn it over. We do the bottom. Remember, red is a strange color. <laughs> if you have any tape lifted anywhere and it can get, get underneath it, it'll go there. And if you're spraying any big areas, it'll go all over your house. Put a light coat on. One time, and then we'll let it dry, flip it over, and, uh, and when I say dry, because this paint's going on so thin, it only takes a minute to dry. I see a spot that's got some dirt in it. Where that dirt came from. Well, I'm going to have to let that dry just to get the dirt out of it. out of paper towels again. I told you I go through lots of paper towels. Well, before I go on any farther, I've got to get that dirt out, and it's going to take a few minutes for it to set up, so we'll come back. See in a few. Well, that dirt wasn't in the red paint, it was in the white paint, so I had to sand it down to get it out of there. So it'll take a few extra coats there on that spot to, to get it to hide.
Takes about three coats for red. Otherwise you have pink. here well let this set up but if you could we're here and could see this where I sanded that out you can see all the way down down to the uh, fiberglass well that's no good I have maybe a squirt or two left in my DC 540 We'll just dust it on there. And that'll go away. So we'll let that set up. mark disappeared it's just a different color so we're gonna have to paint this ever how many coats it's gonna take to get it red obviously usually three or four because it's kind of a pink now what a red over white is very pinkish so we're going to have to wait for the DC 540 to, to dry, maybe maybe 15 minutes, then hit it again with another coat. So instead of keep coming back and forth, I'm just going to go ahead and paint it. When I get it all painted to the my satisfaction, I'll come back when we're ready to demask it. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, got it all painted. Within a half an hour. We're going to start demasking so we get to unwrap the Christmas present. Demasking is just as important as masking, if not more so. Because you could screw up the paint job demasking just as easily as not masking it correctly. Now, I demask while the paint is wet. Some like to wait till it's dry. I don't. Whatever how you want to do it, be very careful. You want to roll the tape back on itself. You don't want to lift it up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have to wait a little longer. It's still a little too wet. At least in that spot. separately.
did my job right, there won't be none or very little, if any, overspray anywhere to clean up. Just like Christmas. Unwrapping the Christmas presents. Get this better. I'll probably present this to myself for Christmas. <laughs> I made my own Christmas present. Now we're going to have to retake that stripe. Not a big deal. Looking good so far. This is the stripe I'm talking about behind the canopy that we'll have to paint separately. And it's picking the tape up. So I'll have to re-tape it. We got through that without pulling any paint up off the fuselage. I had to fix that yesterday. I don't know whether I showed that on the last video, but it had a dry spot back here, and sure enough, when I lifted it up, lifted the tape, it pulled the white paint off. So I had to spend the time fixing the white paint. That's probably another reason why it took longer than normal. After this, I will go get some more paper towels because I'm out.
are no major disasters. But that doesn't mean anything. The last piece of tape could be a disaster. so good. We'll get the tape off the bottom then I'll turn it over and we'll do the fine line on the top. Yeah. Took off some paint right there. I'm going to have to touch that up. Oh well. At least it's on the blue. bummed it's not red the red that needs touched up and now I gotta I have to put blue in the gun or blue in the gun okay good indeed. So now, how do we want to do this? Where's my scalp? There it is. Starting on the bottom, we'll pick up the fine line. Remember, roll it back on itself. That way it has less of a chance to lift the paint, the base color. Tell you, if that little spot that's a sixteenth of an inch is the only thing that needs to be repainted, we get through this model without anything else, I'll be happy. Getting 
this done with all that was on the agenda today, I, I don't really need to try to finish the whole thing in one day. Okay, that's the bottom. That's the bottom. Let's do the top now. See a little bleed through right there, but just take a little alcohol. That went right away. A little pencil line. about an hour or so, we'll come back and we'll card it off. Don't get excited back here because this is where we had the problem. In the back half of the fuselage, if you take your time getting the tape up, it has less chance of pulling the paint up. I'm just going to uh, take the tape off the back half of the fuselage, even though it gets two red stripes back there. It will 
take them off separate. A little bit of overspraying a couple other spots I see. Come out real good. Real happy. One little touch up underneath where the tape pulled off a spot down to the white about a sixteenth of an inch. Not a big deal. Overspray, and that overspray comes off real good with 91 proof alcohol. I need another bottle of that too when I get the paper towels. One more piece of tape, and if we're lucky, that'll be good. the nose. I think it's two stripes back here in the back, but no big deal. Not a big deal. It's got a few nibs in it, but that'll all card off. And I don't want to card it right yet. It's still too soft. But other than that, well, that paint's still kind of fresh. I can't touch that. It looks good. So I'll let it dry up. We'll come back, card it off. I'm going to go to the store and get some paper towels. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, I've taped off the uh, <clears throat> two stripes on the back after we finished off the, the front and we'll shoot this three coats and all the paint on the top will be applied then we can go on to the lettering on the top and the checkerboards on the bottom will start tomorrow. If you think it took some time to do this, it will take some time to do checkerboards. I've put the motor back in it to uh, check the weight. Gained about a quarter ounce with all this painting on it. 49 and 3 quarters now. But with the clear we're looking at 52. Don't see any other way around it. Well, it didn't need three coats. Two coats did it. So, we'll come back in a half an hour demask and I'll uh, show you what she looks like. We now get to unwrap the Christmas present. See what she looks like. We're 
number, it's just reverse order of how you did it. Be careful not to uh, rip the tape up too fast so we have any uh, finished pull ups. I know you think I'm ripping it fast, but that's tape on tape. It's uh, tape on paint. You want to pull straight back towards itself slowly. repaired that once. Don't want to do it again. When you hear it start popping like that, that's when it becomes dangerous. Yeah, there it is. You want it to pull off the, with the same amount of uh, force all the way down. You don't want to hear it going pop, pop, pop. Because that will lift paint up. But we got away with without lifting any paint <clears throat> so far. Because it wasn't the masking tape that lifted the paint the last time. It was the fine line. Which doesn't make sense because this tape here that I'm using, the Body Shop Yellow, is really sticky. But it came up okay so far. Now the fine line, let me get to see what it looks like.
right there. That'll leave nothing to touch with a brush. watching this segment and we'll see you tomorrow.